In the last video, I talked about the initial booming success of the game designed by Will Wright, SimCity. But the success didn't stop there. Far from it, the legendary grip that SimCity would have over the city building genre was only beginning. Join me as we discuss SimCity 2000, the continuation of that impressive legacy. After the meteoric success of SimCity, Will Wright and all of Maxis were being pushed to deliver something even better. Something that didn't just keep a working format, but improved it. Especially as technology continued to improve drastically every year. Will Wright was joined by not just a team of artists and composers, but also someone to help with design, Fred Haslam. Together, Will and Fred would go on to design the city building game that went beyond defining the genre, but defining how a game in this genre needs to look, work, and run to be successful. Initially released to Apple computers in 1993, DOS in 1994, and other systems over the next couple years, SimCity 2000 saw even more success than its predecessor did, selling 4.23 million copies around the world. But the big brains over at Maxis knew this was more than just a popular game. This was the beginning of a legacy. So in February of 1995, they released something called the SimCity 2000 Special Edition, which boasted the SimCity Urban Renewal Kit, or SCRK for short, and Will TV. The Urban Renewal Kit was basically a way for players of SimCity 2000 to, essentially, do what Will did with his very first game and build things for themselves. It let you edit and create buildings in the game, which sounds really cool. Problem for me was that it was a little less than intuitive. But given enough time and patience, I'm sure I could come up with something a little less terrible. Will TV, on the other hand, was essentially a set of commentary videos created by Will Wright himself, answering questions like what future sim games he was going to work on. The interesting thing for his answer is he describes a type of game where the user essentially plays on different levels of the city that they build in SimCity 2000, which is exactly what SimCopter and Streets of SimCity do. These are two games that let you import SimCity 2000 maps and either fly or drive around them. This is also what may have been the original plan for Maxis's other hit game series, The Sims, although that never seemed to come to fruition in that way. He also describes a sort of multiplayer format for these kinds of games, and we basically saw that with the 1996 release of SimCity 2000 Network Edition. This edition of the game was a Windows-only version and boasted an up to four-player multiplayer where each user could buy land and share in-game resources. At this point, Maxis was still on the rise, and Although they had released many other sim games that failed to be as successful as their SimCity series, they were still riding high. Does SimCity 2000 hold up though? Let's find out. Alright, welcome to me playing through a little bit of um, SimCity 2000. So already off the bat you can see that there's a lot more pep into this one. Alright, let's give our city a name. Let's call it Red City. And this time of the year actually does matter because I think different um, power plants unlock at different years. I don't know exactly when, but that's the that's the gist. Okay, so you can actually edit the um, the game or the map to your liking. So I could say I don't want a river. I just want a coast. I want as few mountains as possible, I want a lot of water, and I want a lot of trees. And then make that, and then it'll give me this. So, nice little addition. Uh, I can raise the water level if I want to, lower it again. I can make mountains. Thank you. 
It's not the not the prettiest thing in the world, but you know, it gets the job done. So, anyways, let me try and do one that's actually something that I would want to do. Uh, hills in this game are really actually very annoying, so I am going to make them as minimal as possible. Trees are kind of an annoyance too. They're just kind of in the way. This is fine. Oh, it just flattens areas, I guess. And this one probably just, yep, it just generally raises. Okay, that's neat. I want to make a more natural looking mountain, I guess. Yeah. You can actually have uh, waterfalls and you can make dams. Which I think this is the only SimCity game that lets you make dams. Uh, maybe in the newest one, I'm not sure. But I know that you can't in 3,000 or 4 you know, or societies. So this might be the only one. Let's go ahead and build our city. Uh, let's build up here. The sounds are a lot more pleasant than in SimCity Classic. They had a lot more sounds to work with. You can click on different densities. So I'll start with light density for everything. I do not remember the rules for how far away things can be. I don't remember them for any. What's neat is that hydroelectric is actually just as efficient as a coal power plant. Which is nice. So, since I put these here, uh, this isn't really how dams work, but, you know, whatever. Yep, okay, things are starting to build. So it looks like three away is how far they can go. See, I'm already starting to make money. Very nice. And then connect to water over here. Uh, you can also yeah, build other things too. Build little libraries and I mean it's there's a lot they added a lot to this game and very important I just remembered you can also add signs so I could just be like uh, uh, main avenue this one is uh, right uh, street highways are oh, there we go nuclear power uh, this is something else that's really neat actually is the newspaper it's basically it gives you a bunch of different information you know dr martin designs nuclear power meaning that nuclear power is now available uh commentary on conjugal taxes may are rated 64 percent so you, like this you know taxes are too high according to the citizens they pretty much always complain about that no matter the game Oh yeah, and you can also enact city ordinances. I just remembered this one. So you can raise a little bit more money by raising these things. Um, you can spend a little bit of money by doing this stuff. I don't really have any interest in doing any of these things right now. You can, you know, do a whole bunch of things. Save energy, control pollution, homeless shelters. Uh, free clinics, public smoking ban, a whole bunch of different things. Really, really neat. Really neat. But you can also put out bonds, basically get loans. So if I want to issue a bond, current rates of 4%, do you want to issue the bond? Yes. So I just got $10,000. I will have to slowly pay that money back. As time goes on, as a loan works. So in order to make that worth my while, I should go ahead and develop some. So let's build it out this way.
So yeah. And this is pretty much it. You just keep building your city up and up and that's about that's that's about that. Another cool thing about this is that they added even more graphs than they had in the SimCity Classic. And I love graphs. Graphs make this game ten times more enjoyable. The graphs that they had in SimCity Classic were nice. And the newspapers they have in this game are also nice, but they don't hold a candle to the uh, graphs. This newspaper distracted me. It's trying to sway me back over, but no, cannot do that. Uh, these are also a bit distracting sometimes, which can be a little, it gets a little annoying sometimes. I pause this real quick so we can take a look at our city. And then this is really cool, actually. I really like this. You can you can see the individual industries in this. This is something that I wish any other SimCity game did, but I haven't seen a single one do it. The only thing that's done something somewhat like this is SimCity, uh, or not SimCity, it's uh, City Skylines, where they have different types of industry. If you want, you can actually set specific tax rates for each type of industry. So if I really want uh, finance to start coming here, I can tax finance lower. Or if I want them to get out, I can raise taxes on them. And then right now, the demand is about the same as that. So, so something else that this game does have is it also has scenarios. And it has a lot of scenarios, actually. It has a UFO invasion, it has terrorists. Yeah, I have to put out the fires in Barcelona after a nuclear device was detonated. I might like, try that one out. And it's just a whole bunch of different things that you can do. You have giant lasers and volcanoes in Portland. Some of them are a little more ridiculous than others. Meltdowns in, New in uh, Manhattan. Malibu, you have a giant fire, a flint, you have recession, so it's just interesting. So anyways, yeah, that, that does it for SimCity 2000. It's uh, very neat, actually. It's a lot of fun to play. I don't know if I would go back to it a whole lot because it does still feel dated, but it doesn't feel as dated as SimCity Classic. It does still hold a lot of charm. It has a lot of unique characteristics, but... All in all, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I would definitely recommend you playing this one too. And it would definitely be easier, I think, than playing SimCity Classic because there is a lot more to do. But you will have to still get past some of the clunkier aspects of it being a game from the early 90s. But with that, that about does it for me playing this. Thank you for watching this and uh, back to the video. SimCity 2000 was another game changer, just like the one that came before it. It brought SimCity into the modern era of gameplay and graphics, paving the way for further innovation and modernization, not only of its game series, but of the genre as a whole. In the next video, we'll cover the most nostalgic entry for me in the SimCity series, SimCity 3000. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.